Pray. It is five lights and away we go for the second race of the season. Verstappen, unsurprisingly, getting a lot of wheel spin off the line. You can see us here for that. But now, at the moment, you can see Verstappen here going down the inside of Ricardo and Raikkonen, who's had an awful start. And, well, is he going to be able to get to move down the inside? Surely he can't go down the inside here. Oh my word, what a move from Verstappen. Right, we've had a system shutdown. Press the reset button and hopefully we can get going again. Not enough. Bottas is going to take P6. Verstappen in P7. What a race. What's up, guys, and welcome to the second episode of Career Mode Week. And we are here today for what can only be described as possibly one of the craziest races I have ever had on a Codemasters F1 game. Yes, guys, we're here today for the Chinese Grand Prix, and there's just so many weird things that go on in today's race. So, uh, yeah, do make sure to stick around. And uh, you know what? Before today's video starts, I'm going to ask you guys to comment a couple of things down below. I want uh, you to comment who you think is going to win the race and where you think I am going to finish in this race today. So, uh, yep, go and do that now. Go and comment down below where you think we'll finish and who the race winner is going to be. And then at the end of the video, come back to it and see uh, whether you're right or wrong. But, uh, yeah, um, well, like I said, we're here for the Chinese Grand Prix. And first of all, let's get in to qualifying. So qualifying was about to get underway for the third race of the 2015 season. And would it be Nico Rosberg's third pole position of the season? That was a question upon everyone's lips. But, uh, well, the question on uh, Lotus's lips was, how did Pastor Maldonado do so badly in Q1? He could only manage 19th. And Sergio Perez, once again, could only get 18th place for the Force India team. So very disappointing for him. As it was for Daniel Kvyat, once again, 16th place for him in Q1, but the story of the first session was Will Stevens getting it, getting his Marussia out of the session. He managed P15, meaning he'd be in Q2, as would Max Verstappen. He went out right at the end, which is a bit risky because the rain had started to fall, but he managed to get through into Q2, and there are the eliminated drivers. Kvyat, Grosjean, Perez, Maldonado and Merry would be taking no further part in Saturday's proceedings, but now getting on to Q2. And McLaren Honda managed to make their way into Q2, but Fernando Alonso would get no further. He could only manage P15, and Daniel Ricciardo was a surprise casualty in Q2. He could only get P11 in his Red Bull, which was evidently struggling on the long straights. And Valtteri Bottas only just managed to get through in his Williams. He could only put it in P10 in Q2. But the story of that session was Nico Hulkenberg getting 6th in his Force India. Fantastic for him. As it was for Max Verstappen, you can see him here coming round the final corner and putting in a very good lap, getting him into Q3. But there, here you can see the eliminated drivers from Q2. It was going to be Daniel Ricciardo in 11th, alongside Will Stevens in 12th, with Naza, Button and Alonso also eliminated. But Q3 was once again the story of Nico Rosberg. He managed to get his third pole position in a row third of the season, he was looking imperious and the driver he lined up alongside in Malaysia, Kimi Raikkonen, could only manage ninth position in Q3. He was out qualified even by Marcus Ericsson who put in a superb lap to get seventh for the Sauber team. Fantastic from him. As it was from Carlos Sainz Jr., the Toro Rosso was really looking on form this weekend. He managed sixth position but while little would he know that he'd be out qualified by his teammate Max Verstappen, he can see Verstappen coming across the, uh, the line to start his one and only lap in Q3. You can see they're getting a little bit on the gravel, but apart from that, it was a very, very tidy lap from the Dutchman. You can see him here coming around the right-hander, going onto the main straight, and coming around the final corner, keeping it within the track limit. It would be fifth for the Dutchman in a fantastic qualifying for Toro Rosso. But this is the grid for Sunday's race. Hulkenberg and Raikkonen will be starting on row five with Bottas and Ericsson starting on an all-Scandinavian row four. Now you can see Carlos Sainz Jr. alongside his teammate Max Verstappen on row three, with Massa and Hamilton, the two 2008 championship rivals, and there Vettel and Rosberg on the front row of the grid. Right then, Max, best of luck today. We think there is going to be some rain coming in around half an hour, so we'll keep you posted. 
Well, there you can hear from the team that there is going to be some rain for this Chinese Grand Prix. Yes, guys, it is race time for the Chinese Grand Prix. And there you can see the pulse to Nika Rosberg looking imperious on a Saturday at the moment. And I do believe he is currently leading the championship as well. And there the Williams team making some final adjustments. But, well, it's going to be an incredibly interesting race here today. And especially if the rain does spice things up. It's a recommended two-stopper, but uh, obviously that will be a little little bit flexible uh, seeing as there is some predicted rain coming but uh, now it is time to get down to business it's time for the lights we've got four lights and five lights for the Chinese Grand Prix and away we go from fifth position on the grid and Lewis Hamilton's got a puncture off the line what on earth is going on here crazy stuff is going on straight from lights out and we go around the outside of uh, Felipe Massa we're already up into P3 I have literally no idea what has gone on with Lewis Hamilton there and for some reason Nico Rosberg is on the prime tyres. I mean, he qualified on pole and had a fantastic lap in qualifying. But why is he? Why is he put on the? How is he put on the prime tyres to start with? I mean, I'm not sure whether he qualified on those in Q2. Uh, but still, I mean, it's a very, very strange. A decision if that was the case. I mean, why would Mercedes do that to Rosberg in Q2? But uh, nonetheless, Verstappen's going to try and capitalize on this and uh, maybe try and get up into P2. He's going incredibly slowly in a section where the Mercedes should be very strong in the flowing uh, sort of section of corners. But now you can see Verstappen really closing in. Uh, Sebastian Vettel's absolutely done one out front. I mean, he must have probably about a five second lead. But this is a replay of the start. And you can just see that Lewis Hamilton gets the puncture straight off the line and then just all carnage ensues in the background. I have literally no idea what goes on, but uh, we'll, we'll forget about that complete cluster for the moment. And there you can see Verstappen taking his line through the first few turns and uh, getting very, very tidy through those sections as well, which is uh, very good to see. And you can just see the gap that Vettel has already got. But now we're going to take a look at the carnage from the back of the grid. And there you can see just everybody getting caught up in it, including Kimi Raikkonen. So his poor qualifying was punished. And then Daniel Kvyat's out of the race. And there's a Lotus which has just gone through Kvyat. And I have no idea what Lewis Hamilton is doing at this stage whatsoever, or Kimi Raikkonen. But uh, either way, it is complete craziness from lap one in this Grand Prix. And at the end of lap one, you can see here Verstappen coming around the final corner. But, well, Nico Rosberg isn't going around the final corner. He's going into the pit lane. I, I just have no words at the moment. I have just no idea what's going on. And uh, anyway, I do know what's going on. That's that Valtteri Bottas is attacking us into turn one. Is he going to make a move down the inside? Yes, he is. But are we going to fight it? Because we're going to have the inside line for the next turn. But no, Bottas has got the move done. So fair play to him. He's looking as if he's got a lot of grip in this early stage of the Chinese Grand Prix. But uh, he, he looks as if he's going to go out front and... Uh, Maybe extend his lead over us and maybe even go and hunt down Sebastian Vettel who's got a huge lead out front at the moment. But uh, skipping later on into lap two and what on earth is happening there? Oh my word, Bottas has been completely held up by Hamilton and he's taken him out. I just, I just don't know what has happened to Hamilton. I mean, he's got a puncture. And then all of a sudden, we've supposedly done an illegal overtake on a driver who hasn't even been near us in this Grand Prix. Daniel Ricciardo, I mean... I just, I just don't know. I, and, well, anyway, we're going to take a look at what happens to Bottas. There's a floating tyre uh, above him, and then just, well, I don't, I don't even know what Hamilton's doing. He's completely taken uh, Bottas out, and well, Bottas has slipped right down the field, as you can see in the top left. He's down into P10 momentarily, but uh, I'm sure he'll be able to fight his way through the grid. And anyway, there's, there's Ricardo, and I don't know what's happened to Vettel either. We've bumped into the back of him. It's an incredibly messy start to this Grand Prix. And now Hulkenberg's gone down our inside, seeing as Vettel is just crawling, even though he had about a 20-second lead over anyone. But uh, anyway, we shouldn't be behind a Force India at this stage. And there is just so much going on. There is no way I can, I can keep up with what's going on. And, you know, I've shown replays of the start. I, I've hardly edited anything out at this stage of the Grand Prix. It's just craziness. I mean, we're in P3 still somehow, even though we've been overtaken about by about 50 cars. Or at least it seems that way anyway. We're still in P3. And uh, anyway, we're going on to the start of lap three now. 
So, are we going to be able to go down the inside of Hulkenberg here? That would be a fantastic move. We're into rich mixture on the fuel. We just go down the inside of Hulkenberg, and now we're side by side with Nico Hulkenberg going into turn two and turn three here, and eventually turn four and five. But uh, Hulkenberg's managed to hold it around the outside, but we just. Well, we just stuck the car there and uh, hope for the best. Now we're back up into P2. Just Daniel Ricciardo to negotiate now. But uh, later on in lap three, Hulkenberg is going to take another look at us. Of course, our Renault engine is far inferior to his uh, Mercedes power unit in the back of that Force India. But we squeeze him out and hold our P2. There is no way we're going to give this up without any sort of fight. And there's yellow flags. And I'm pretty sure Daniel Ricciardo has now been taken out by an AI car. Which we, I, I just wouldn't be surprised what whatsoever but uh, anyway we're going to take advantage of that and take P1 in this Grand Prix I, I just can't believe it I mean we're in P1 what is going on here but we run wide and I think Hulkenberg is going to take advantage of that because his teammate is now up into P3 and is it going to be a force in well it's a force it's a double force India podium at the moment but is Nico Hulkenberg going to take back the lead and uh, no he isn't we do manage to just about hold it there but uh, skipping all the way on to lap 5 now and I believe Hulkenberg has now got the DRS so he's going to make an easy move down the inside but uh, we're going to try and fight it as much as we can maybe get the switch back or even hold it around the outside that would be fantastic we're going to have the inside for the next corner no we don't we're just going to slip behind him and maybe even take the outside line into the final turn. But uh, no, we just stick behind him as we get a lot of sparks in our face out of the final turn. But uh, we're on the DRS now. And are we going to make a move into turn one as we switch to the cinematic camera? We take a very wide line into turn one. And that's going to open up the next couple of turns for us uh, if we can get down the inside of Hulkenberg. But no, we just slot in behind. And I don't think we're going to be able to make the move stick at the moment. But uh, still, we are just sticking behind Hulkenberg and maybe into turn six I think that could be a good overtaking spot as the race goes on we're just going to stick behind Hulkenberg for the meantime but uh, as I said we've got plenty of time left in this Grand Prix and uh, the uh, the race is early on in its uh, well in its stage is I guess you could say that made no sense whatsoever but anyway we're just going to skip back onto the racing uh, as you can see, Hulkenberg has got held up by a back marker, and I said turn six was going to be a great overtaking opportunity, and I've just been proven completely correct, and we are up into P1 in this Grand Prix. Just what is going on at this stage? We are up into P1. Team Radio. Okay, Max, that is P1. Very well done. Just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, I think the team put it very, very well there. Just keep doing what you're doing because there is no way we can control all this craziness that's going on around us. I mean, Bottas has managed to make his way back up into P3. Lap 8 and our, our tyres, they may, may as well have been put on the barbecue because they are cooked to their death. But uh, Bottas has made a move down our inside and now his teammate fancies a go. He's going around that outside. There is no way we can deal with this because we've got a piddly Renault engine in the back. And, well, we've just been completely mugged. And even Fernando Alonso with his Honda engine is catching us up. I believe we're just going to dive into the pits at the end of this lap. Yes, because we have got no chance of fighting those Williams. But uh, Bottas also goes into the pit lane. And I believe Massa will probably go for one extra lap, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, now as we cut onto the cinematic view of this pit stop, we're going to get a good view of the Toro Rosso guys to see if they can do a good job on the car. I'm sure they will. They have done for the rest of this season. But... Well, that is just one of the craziest first stints I think I've ever experienced on a Formula 1 game. I mean, fighting with Hulkenberg and Perez for P1, I, I did not think that day would come on F1 2015. But uh, anyway, now Valtteri Bottas has joined in front of us, but we've just gone down his inside. What is he playing at? He is just absolutely... He, he must have just... I just don't know. I mean, he's going so slow on the exit of the pit lane. I mean... We, we've just had to go down his inside and uh, at the end of lap 9 I believe his teammate is in the pit lane uh, and so is Fernando Alonso uh, Daniel Ricciardo is still out there at the moment and you remember he pitted very early on in this Grand Prix but there's Felipe Massa we're going to do the same as we did to Bottas a very easy move down the inside don't mind if I do up into P2 and I think this could actually be a net P1 if I'm not mistaken. The rain should be coming in about 10 or 15 minutes time. But uh, I don't think we should get too ahead of ourselves. Because at the moment we've got a, a battle well and truly on our hands. 
can just see how much the tyres are overheating through these first few turns, but uh, I think that's the least of all worries at the moment. Felipe Massa, we're having a complete ding-dong battle with him at the moment. He doesn't manage, no, he does manage to get past us, in fact. He's got superior traction on that racing line, which I think was proven earlier in one of our battles with Nico Hulkenberg. So uh, that inside line is not proving to be the best on the exit of the uh, the snail section. So now Bottas fancies a go, but uh, we just say no and we'll shut the door on him. But uh, no, 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 no. Sure enough, come lap 11, he's just like, nah, I'm just going to get past you. So uh, that was pretty easy for him. And uh, he just opens the DRS and stretches his, his advantage. And now Nico Hulkenberg fancies a go at the action, but we're just going to try and stick with Bottas as much as we can. But uh, it doesn't look as if it's come to any use whatsoever because he has bolted into the distance and uh, now around the final corner. I believe we will get DRS on this pit straight. How effective it will be, I am not sure. But uh, anyway, coming now towards turn one, I don't think we're quite close enough to make a move. But uh, still, we're closing in a lot through turn one, which is very, very good to see. Unfortunately, once again, the tyres are overheating quite a lot and we don't quite close up enough. Box this lap, Max. Box this lap. We'll fit another set of option tyres because the rain is coming in 10 minutes. Well, the team want us to box at the end of this lap. So we're only on lap 13, uh, which means we haven't gone far at all on these tyres. But uh, the team seem to, seem to think it's a good call to come into the pit lane now. And I suppose get the undercut on the rest of the runners. I mean, the rain, it, it, like, well, like they said, it's expected in sort of 10 or 15 minutes time. So once his stint is over on this next set of option tyres, then we should be ready for maybe the intermediate tyres or even the full wets, depending on how wet it gets. And uh, these replay cameras, they never fail to amuse me. I mean, you saw the orientation of the tyres there. I mean, it's just completely facing in the wrong direction. But uh, anyway, enough of that. We'll get back into the racing. We're halfway through the Grand Prix now, and we've rejoined just ahead of our teammate, Carlos Sainz. So we're still in a points paying position and we're, we're a pit stop behind everyone else, sorry, a pit stop ahead of everyone else. But uh, coming towards the start of lap 15 now and it looks, as th it looks as if there's a lot of cars who are actually in the pit lane. So uh, we are up now into P5 which is looking very, very good. We're ahead of Pastor Maldonado, still behind Fernando Alonso who I believe has got to pit. And I think that's him in the pit lane now. And yes, we're up into P4 and that's Valtteri Bottas who I think has just rejoined on the racetrack ahead of us and come lap 20 the rain is just starting to fall I think you'll be able to tell on your screens that uh, the rain is starting to fall and the tires are falling off the cliff so uh, while well, it's looking as if it may be time for intermediate tires and if we can wait one more lap and maybe go on to those inters for the next lap okay then we're going to need you to box for inters this lap the track is looking ready for them well, yeah, it looks as if it's just about ready for the intermediate tyres. I mean, it, you can clearly see the raindrops on the screen now, but the tyres are absolutely shot. So, we, you know, we have no alternative. It's either we go on a set of drives or we go on a set of inters and take a little bit of a gamble, really. But, uh, the, uh, you know, I'm going to put complete faith in the engineers and, you know, they've told me that the rain is going to keep going. So I'm just going to blame Nero if anything goes wrong in this Grand Prix. So uh, hashtag blame Nero and down in the comments, please. But uh, anyway, we come out of the pit lane on the start of lap 22. And yes, it's looking definitely ready for the wet tyres. So thank you very much, Nearin, for that fantastic advice. I never doubted you for one second. But uh, anyway, we come out of the pit lane and our tyres are stone cold. So yeah, it must be ready because if, if it wasn't ready, then these tyres would already be overheating and uh, they, they can't even heat up. So it may even be time for the wet tyres sooner rather than later. But uh, we rejoin in P6 and it looks as if now we're a sort of a lap ahead of the carnage which is ensuing. I believe that's Roman Grosjean in the pit lane. Uh, we, either way, we've been promoted up into P5 and that's someone else who's just come out of the pits. I think that's Fernando Alonso and he's just put the intermediate tyres on. So are we going to be able to get ahead of him and his Honda engine? And I don't think we're going to be able to get past him. No, we've got the outside line, which is the racing line. And as we know from this Grand Prix, that has proved to be the best line possible. Why on earth is a McLaren Honda so far up? I have no idea. I mean, you know, th th this Grand Prix just never fails to amuse me. But uh, anyway, we're up into P4 somehow. And uh, we're on lap 24. So there's only four or five laps left in this Grand Prix now. 
and we've got Bottas directly in front of us, but now that's Felipe Massa on lap 26, and he is 16 seconds up the road, but uh, what is what has gone on here? I mean, we've got a green flag, which means there must have been a yellow flag at some point, and that's Felipe Massa. He must have got caught up in some kind of carnage, and that's someone else. I believe that's Kimi Raikkonen, who is a lap down in this Grand Prix, so they must have had some sort of tangle. And I have just no words for what's gone on, but uh, we're going to take a look at a replay now. And look at that. I mean, in front is Daniel Ricciardo, who's still on the dry tyres. So Mass has been held up, and then Raikkonen just goes across the racetrack and completely wipes out another Williams driver. So that's two Williams drivers that have been wiped out in this race. First Bottas, who looks as if he's going to go on and win the Grand Prix after that incident. And, well, Massa has just been taken out. And uh, now that's Daniel Ricciardo, who, like I say, is still on the dry tyres. So we have taken P2 in this Grand Prix. It's just Valtteri Bottas who's ahead of us now. And the rain is absolutely, it's throttling it down at the moment. I mean, Bottas is 10 or 11 seconds up the road, so I don't think we're going to be able to catch him. But just look at that standing water, which, well, we just can't compete with that at the moment. But uh, anyway, coming now onto the final lap of the Grand Prix. And wow, what a race we have had. We have somehow managed to come through the carnage and taken P2, yes, P2 in this Grand Prix. We're going to get on the podium. Valtteri Bottas has taken the win in a crazy Chinese Grand Prix. We come round the final corner. We can hardly control the car because it's time for the wet tyres. But nonetheless, we have taken P2 in the Chinese Grand Prix. What a race. Fantastic stuff, Max. That's a podium. Enjoy the moment, mate. You deserve that. Oh my word, I just cannot believe what has gone on in that Grand Prix. We've somehow managed to take P2, I mean, just look at the penalties galore. Ricardo has got a penalty, that must have been for the collision with uh, Felipe Massa, but uh, so Roman Grosjean is going to be making up an incredibly weird podium with Fernando Alonso in P5, Hulkenberg in P6 after he led momentarily, Maldonado in P7, and, well... Rosberg scored no points, neither has Hamilton, neither has Kvyat, so, or Raikkonen, and it's just absolutely crazy, so we've overtaken Kvyat in the Drivers' Championship at the moment, and wow, what an absolutely crazy race we have had, and we, we're up into fifth in the Drivers' Championship somehow, behind Massa, Ricardo, who's in third, we're above Lewis Hamilton in the Drivers' Championship. I mean, something is seriously wrong there. But uh, Toro Rosso are still fifth in the Constructors' standings. So uh, we haven't made too many moves because Sainz didn't have a great race. But, well, who'd have thought that so early on in this series we'd be seeing a podium finish? There you can see Bottas is incredibly happy. But we have managed to get P2. And look at that, a trophy for us. Verstappen looking incredibly happy. So a fantastic race, and while I just, I, if anybody managed to predict that we got second and Bottas won down in the comments, and all I can say is you must have cheated, but uh, well, what a race that was, what a podium, and now we're going to take a look at our statistics after the third race of the season. So taking a look at the stats shows us one blindingly obvious thing, and that is Verstappen is absolutely bossing it so far. And as you can see, once again, he has outraced, well, he's outraced both of the Red Bull drivers, meaning that is one more on his side of the fence. So it's 2-1 at 2 Verstappen against the Red Bull drivers. And once again, he smashed qualifying, so it's 3 nothing to Verstappen in that respect. Now, the Red Bull guys have actually got one back with regards to fastest laps. Uh, because, you know, seeing as Kvyat didn't complete a lap in this Grand Prix, I thought it was a bit unfair to sort of give myself a point. And uh, actually, uh, both Sainz and Ricardo uh, got faster laps than me. So I thought, you know what, I'll give Red Bull uh, a point for that. But, uh, well, the one that does matter in this race is the podiums aspect. Now, we're the first Red Bull driver full stop to get a podium. So that's one nothing to us in that respect. 
And with regards to World Drivers' Championship points, we're currently ahead of Kvyat, but behind Ricardo. So, well, by the looks of things, it looks as if we're uh, on our way to at least a number two seat at Red Bull next season. But I'll tell you what, guys, if this race doesn't deserve a like and a comment down below, then I have no idea what will. But uh, anyway, I'm back for Bahrain next race. So if we get 150 likes in this video, that'd be fantastic. And I can tell you, actually, uh, Bahrain isn't a bad race whatsoever. There is plenty of battling in that race so uh yeah hopefully i'll see you guys then hopefully you can stick around for that but uh, yeah until my next video guys take care and bye bye